to go to the moon? In the 1960s, the Soviets and Americans were already racing to the moon. With my pill. Europe did not want to remain a bystander. We were tiny at the time compared with the Americans. The idea back then was to gain some independent access to space. It was a rocky road which Europe overcame by uniting behind the Ariane launch system in 1973. If you want to be a player in space, the first thing you need is to get some kind of access. Space exploration is a question of sovereignty. It's fundamental, strategic. So how did the Europeans launch their space program and what are the challenges ahead? Before Ariane, there were Véronique and Diamant in the 1950s. Two small rockets for research. France was the third country to send a satellite to space. France was the driving force behind Ariane. The program was linked to nuclear deterrence. When a country starts making rockets, it's usually because it has a plan to make nuclear weapons. In the 1970s, the Europeans did not have powerful launchers, and they had to send their satellites from the U.S. Developing Ariane was a strategic necessity. At the beginning of it all, there was a Franco-German satellite called Symphony. The Americans gave their terms for sending it into orbit. The Americans said, of course we can send your satellites to space, we're allies, aren't we? But don't think of developing any businesses with those satellites. That's when the Europeans understood that autonomy comes with a price. To have real access without depending on the US or other powers, you have to develop a major space program. France took the helm, financing 60% of the Ariane program. Kourou in French Guiana was chosen as a launch base. Why the French Space Agency? Because we had already developed Diamant and Véronique, two sounding rockets that were a success. European countries acknowledged that experience. France was by far the most advanced European country in space exploration. That's why CNES, the French Space Agency, was asked to pilot the program. The program's name was a symbol with deeply European roots. Ariane is a reference to Greek mythology and the goddess who saved Theseus with a ball of string, helping him to escape the labyrinth of the Minotaur. Today's Ariane has saved the European space program after several failed attempts to kickstart it. That's the official story, although there are other theories. The other version of the story is that one minister called Charbonnel, and who had some sway in Brussels, suggested that name because he had always dreamed of having a daughter, and Ariane was his favorite name. Que le programme a pris ce nom. Eight years later, Ariane 1 took off. Kourou, 18h, 14 minutes 38 secondes, heure de Paris. Ça y est, Ariane s'élance dans le ciel du centre spatial guyanais, poussé par les 250 tonnes des quatre moteurs de son premier étage. Une ascension verticale impeccable que l'on peut suivre grâce aux 12 caméras de télévision. Ce premier étage va brûler pendant 145 secondes, c'est-à-dire pendant près de 2 minutes et demie. Pendant ces 2 minutes 30 d'ascension, Ariane va consommer une tonne de carburant à la seconde. Voici un délimiteur, car pour la caméra couleur... On avait travaillé comme des fous. We worked tirelessly for weeks, especially towards the end, to be honest. The fact the launch was a success was unexpected. People didn't have much faith. Success was key for the future. Ariane was the first rocket launcher whose three stages were tested at the same time and the first to pass that test on the first try. Success always comes with a fair amount of failures. Ariane 
The launchers were constantly evolving, becoming more reliable with more power and capacity. Ariane 2, 3, 4 followed, and then the almost mythical Ariane 5. In the late 1980s, it became a world leader. Those were the glory days. Ariane 5 dominated the market for two decades. It spearheaded space exploration. Being at the forefront was not just due to hard work, it was also fate. Fate or a tragic accident? In 1986, the U.S. stopped launching satellites with its space shuttle. Il est 11h38 à Cap Canaveral, la navette quitte enfin l'air de l'ancien. Sa trajectoire est presque rectiligne, tout semble se passer pour le mieux, rien en tout cas ne laisse prévoir une catastrophe. Une minute 45 après son lancement, la navette n'est plus qu'une boule de feu traînant dans son sillage de lourdes volutes de fioul enflammé. On pense surtout, bien sûr, aux sept astronautes pris dans cette boule de feu. En 1986, there was the Challenger accident, which led President Reagan to ban the commercial use of shuttles. Interdiction de mettre d'utilisation commerciale de la navette. They could no longer launch satellites, so all of their clients turned to Ariane. Sur le marché commercial des satellites, vont vers Ariane. Ce qui a fait le succès d'Ariane. The key to Ariane's success was in part due to its quality, but also to the struggles the Americans had with their shuttle. À partir de cette navette spatiale. The U.S. program was more expensive, more complicated, and dangerous than previously thought, and failure was far more dramatic. Losing human life rather than a load of steel, as expensive as it may be. Même si elle est très chère, un gros tas de ferraille. Ariane was a flagship program, a technological, commercial and diplomatic success for Europe. Working within Europe can be a booster, but it can also slow you down. Space is so expensive, nobody wants to pay the bill, especially not alone. The idea was to have everyone bring the best they have to the project. Ariane has been a vector in the development of Europe's industrial capacities. With one rule, you get what you put in. Each country receiving contracts equivalent to the amount they've spent. Everyone puts money in the pot and wants to see its own businesses prosper. They want to own a piece of the launcher. It's the principle of geographical return. Our rockets are complex and everyone takes part in their development. This is Ariane 6. It costs 3 billion euros, financed by 13 countries, and it will be ready three years ago. The problem with Ariane 6, it's that it's long awaited. The mistake they are making is almost a philosophical one. Europe's strategic error is that instead of being efficient, they try to be sophisticated. Instead of doing something simple with technologies they know well, something they can launch fast and for a lower cost, the Europeans chose to develop lots of new technologies. And in space industries, you really want to stick to technologies that work. Ariane 6 is 40% cheaper and is revolutionary. Its top stage can turn itself on and launch several satellites into different orbits. But since they started making it in 2014, things have changed. A new player entered the market, blowing up all codes and principles. From the Falcon 9 to the space station, on the first commercial launch from Kennedy Space Center's historic Pad 39A. SpaceX has appeared and developed at unbelievable speed. No expert from the Ariane program had seen this coming. A reusable rocket that is reliable, less expensive, capable of flying 60 times per year? Elon Musk's private company has succeeded where space shuttles have failed. What's happening now is what we dreaded would happen 45 years ago. But there's no cause for alarm. And Ariane has overcome similar obstacles before. Ariane 6, it's late on its deadline, it's too big, it's not reusable and criticized by many. However, it has orders for the next three years. 
28 launches booked, 18 flights for Jeff Bezos' satellite constellation, a historic contract of more than 1 billion euros. Those small satellites will be brought to a low orbit, like Elon Musk's Starlink constellations. They too will provide internet connections to remote areas. An Ariane client now doesn't want to launch massive telecommunications satellites of five or six tons. Today, they want to deploy constellations. The satellites are smaller, but many of them need to be launched at once on different orbits. Ariane is precisely the type of launcher that allows us to evolve and move on from the geostationary satellite market to constellations. After being exclusively managed by world powers, space exploration is now in the realm of private companies, but it remains a vital stake for governments. Americans launched their satellites with U.S. rockets. The Chinese use Chinese vessels. Ariane 6 is therefore still in part a national asset. It's a guarantee that Europe can send its satellites, even if there are disagreements between partners. With Ariane 5's retirement, Europe is now dependent on the U.S. to send its satellites. Pressure is mounting on the next generation, Ariane 6.